Hello everyone, this is Mr. El Barona here again, and today I'm here to talk about what I would change about Once Justice 2 if I had the power to. If I was in the developer's seat and I was able to change the game however I wanted, um, these are the things that I would change. And these aren't going to be changes to characters like who I would buff and who I would nerf. These are changes to like the core mechanics of the game and how I think if these were changed, the game would be a lot more fun in general. Okay, so and there are going to be a few things that I'm talking about. There's going to be a few points that I change. There will be um, changes to yellow attacks, red attacks, sidesteps, and just the whole meta around wake-ups, um, recoveries, and uh, staggers. So, let's start with talking about red attacks. And I don't know if this is going to be a controversial one, but I'm going to have a lot of changes to red attacks. I think they are very inconsistent and imbalanced, but they're, so they're great but also awful at the same time. <laughs> Which is an unusual mechanic, unusual thing to say about a move. But essentially, I think red attacks... You can have ones that are different. See, Mirio and characters like Mirio and Uraraka are very privileged to have very fast and decent ranged red attacks that they can combo off of. And I think that's okay. You know, you have to have characters with different moves, characters that have different strengths with different buttons. So I'm not saying to take the great red attacks away from these characters, but one thing that I would make consistent about all red attacks is that they can be sidestepped. I have no idea why there are characters like Mirio, who, whose red attack is literally almost impossible to dodge. So even if I do it like here and the opponent sidesteps right as it's coming at them, so they react to the red, they sidestep, it still hits them. They have to do it at the extreme latest of timing in order to not get hit by that. Even then, like right as like the end of it, so press, sidestep, it still hits them. Red attack, there. Yeah. Oh, he didn't even sidestep. Red attack, sidestep, still hits them, and then because they like dashed and tried to do the right thing and get away from the red attack, I'm getting a full combo. Don't know why I dropped it, but I'm getting a full combo. And I'm sorry, but I just think that's unfair. There is supposed to be, like, is the idea of red attacks not that they can be sidestepped, but they're unblockable? So if you're sitting there and blocking, you'll get hit by them. You're supposed to be able to dodge them. Like, the only way to dodge a character like Mirio or um, Red Attack is to, like, dash backwards. If you're, like, in enough range, you can dash backwards and it'll miss. But, like, in a lot of ranges, it'll hit because it breaches really far. Or, like, if you, like, just stay in the air where it can't hit you. Or if you dash, like, right before it hits, there is a way to make it dodge. But that's kind of hard for me to do with AI. So, yeah, that's what I would change about red attacks. It's not going to affect most characters, but just make it consistent so red attacks like this are able to be sidestepped. Because that's the whole idea of red attacks, is that you have an unblockable move, but you have to make a read. And if you make the wrong read and they sidestep it, you're probably going to get punished for it. You can't just throw out this red attack all the time and it'll literally always hit. But that's just... I have no idea why that is in the game. Okay, so the next thing would um, is with sidesteps that Bakugo is doing right now. So, um, sidesteps in general are something that I'm very glad are in the game. They are a great addition to the game's um, playstyle because you know it makes it a really easy to get, a lot easier to get around zoning and annoying spamming because you have something to get out of the way of moves. It ma makes a lot more ability in the air as well. You can get out of the way and dodge things. And yeah, I, it just makes the game feel a lot more fluid that you can get out of the way and you can cancel your runs with it, like to get out of the way of moves. It's just a really good button, but I think it's actually too good. And I know if you've ever played online, you've definitely been in a situation where you sidestep and go to attack, but then the opponent sidesteps your attack and then attacks you, but then you sidestep there and then you sidestep them and attack and then they have to sidestep you and attack. And then you're in this loop where like sidestep, attack, sidestep, attack, sidestep, attack, and no one's hitting each other. Because the sidesteps are just so invincible that no moves like ever get hit by them. And I'm not exactly complaining about that situation, exact, um, like that <laughs> funny situation. That doesn't make me annoyed at all. I just don't like how 
sidesteps are such a strong tool that you can never be confident that you have enough advantage to press a button. Pressing a button in this game is like actually such a huge risk and I don't like that I have to be at risk for deciding to press a button. Because if I go to press a button and the opponent just happens to do a sidestep, I'm probably going to get punished for pressing that button. Because they're going to sidestep and go in and press buttons and do a full combo on me and I've just lost a big chunk of my life just because I decided to make the aggressive move. Even if I made the right read and I did it and then, yeah. And a lot of characters like poor Endeavor that have slightly slower attack buttons that are more reactable. Or even if I press the button from over here and, the opponent and I have to run up. You can basically never get a hit on an opponent from over here with an attack. Because if they press the sidestep button, they see you running up. They're gonna sidestep out of the way before you reach them. You're gonna be running up there, like, throwing your punch like an idiot. And they just punish you for doing that. And I, I really don't like how sidesteps are that strong. So what I would change about them is... See how they take about a third of the meter each time you do a sidestep? I'd actually make it take a half, or even three quarters, because I feel like they're such a strong tool, and you can keep doing them even though you run out of your stamina meter up there. So even though I'm out, I can still keep doing sidesteps. I'd leave it like that, because, you know, they're a good mobility tool. I wouldn't completely take them away from you. But I feel like they should just cost a bit more, so you can't just do them so willy-nilly. Because especially when you have full stamina, there's, like, no detriment to, like, ever doing a sidestep. You can sidestep all you want, and it doesn't really matter. You can do, like, two or three, and you're gonna be fine. And I think, like, the only bad thing is if you do, like, three in a row, and then you block afterwards, the opponent's gonna instantly guard break you. And I feel like if you do, like, one sidestep or even two and just decide to block afterwards, your opponent deserves, um, to, to break your guard because you've made the wrong read, you've just sidestepped, and you've blocked, you've used like a strong tool and you need to use them like effectively you need to think about when you're using them instead of just throwing them out whenever you want so actually make them have a reason to be so strong and make them cost something so, so you have to think, yeah basically just so you have to think about using such a strong tool a bit more because they are really good, like it's almost like adding invincibility at the beginning of your buttons it's like Mirio's invincibility but instead of having to do this unsafe punch you can go in and do a full combo because you've added invincibility to the beginning of your button. But yeah, so that's what I would change about the sidestep. And um, this next change also kind of affects the sidestep as well, but it is in regards to yellow attacks, and I feel that every yellow in attack in the game should have, like, unlimited tracking. Unlimited tracking. Like, unavoidable tracking. So if I... So, and this is in regards to staggering as well. So if I press a button, and as you know, Mirio has a gap in between his first and second hit. So if I go up and the opponent blocks my buttons, there's a gap there and they can sidestep. I'm fine with that, that's how the game was designed, it makes sense. Um, what I don't like is that most characters have nothing they can do about it. And I feel like a good way to fix that is like if you make the read that they're gonna sidestep, you do a yellow attack, and the yellow attack punishes their sidestep. Mirio, it doesn't work for like whatever reason. You can tell that they were trying to go for that, but they just don't work. They're like, they either completely whiff or they like half whiff at the beginning. Mirio's is like super inconsistent. Sometimes it hits just not at all, and then you get completely punished if you like double whiffed his yellow attack. Sometimes it hits, but then they could block that second part. I feel like if they just changed all the yellow attacks slightly, so they had better tracking, traveled a tiny bit further, and just like had better hitboxes. So if you make the read that the opponent's gonna sidestep in your combos, you can make the read, do a yellow attack, and then you get a combo for making the right guess. And if you make the wrong guess, and then the opponent doesn't decide to sidestep, then you're just an idiot, and you've done a yellow attack, and you're completely punishable. And you, you've made the wrong read, and the opponent will punish your yellow attack, and they get a full combo that time. And, yeah, that kind of leads on to, um, from my change to sidesteps, and how I was wanting to make them a bit weaker. And having yellow attacks be better at, um, being, like, pro trackers, like, being able to track anything down, like, no matter when the opponent moves or dodges, they still hit. Like, or, unless, obviously, they go, like, backwards and they're far out of the range, but I feel like they should just have good tracking, Kind of like in a lot of other fighters, when there's something to be able to, when there's something that can give you invincibility or an advantage to get out of a situation, 
there's something that can beat that tool. So that there's always a tool that can beat a different one. And there's always a disadvantage. To sidestep, there's nothing. So I feel like making yellow attacks being a counter to sidesteps would be a really good addition to the game. Because people love doing sidesteps so much. So I feel like being able to do a yellow attack and make a read on a sidestep and getting a combo for it would be a great addition. And um, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, won't that make yellow attacks so overpowered, people just keep throwing them out all the time. And that's something that I'm going to change as well, is the concept of punishing in this game, I feel like, is so stupid. So, the idea of an unsafe attack basically doesn't exist in this game. So, I'll do my yellow attack, this is something that is supposed to be unsafe. So I'm holding down the block button after I do it, obviously there's a lot of recovery, the opponent can um, should be able to punish that. But in this game, where you can dash cancel basically anything on block, you can make either anything completely safe by doing a dash cancel into a sidestep, or you can make it go into more pressure. And there is slight gaps there for sidesteps, so a lot of cases you can actually press buttons after a dash cancelled yellow attack. But a lot of the time, it leads to dumb pressure when you've clearly made the wrong move and done a yellow attack, which is something that's supposed to be unsafe. But, you at least for me, I don't think I've ever had the opportunity to punish a, si a yellow attack because people know that they're unsafe, so they're not just going to let them sit there and get punished. People always will either sidestep them and go in for more pressure, like so, like, like so. Or, if they're smart and they know that, that sometimes that doesn't work, they'll do it if they do a yellow attack. Oops, <laughs> that. They sidestep out of it, and that makes you completely safe, because you block off to the sidestep, you have invincibility from the sidestep, and you can make any move completely safe. So there's no... There's basically no risk to doing a yellow attack, unless you're like all the way out here, and you completely whiff it, and you can't cancel it. That's the only time when there's ever a risk to yellow attacks, and I feel like what I will change about what I would change about yellow attacks is making them that you can't cancel them. You can't cancel them into other buttons and making them completely safe. Like even Mario here. See how his is like unsafe if he does a second hit? I don't even have to do the second hit. Wait, let me just break his guard. I, oh my god, hello. I can cancel that into a different button. And then I can cancel that button into a dash cancel, into other things. So there's just way too much unpredictability. I could even do something like this. Um, like if I do my yellow attack in a stream. I can do this mix up and then cancel that, and then I've made it safe. Why are these so safe? I have no idea. So yeah, that's what I would change about yellow attacks. Make them that you can't cancel them into anything. No dash cancels. Um, no other buttons that you can cancel them into. They are just unsafe. And for characters like, um, uh, Momo and All Might that have safe uh, yellow moves, if you if they really want to keep it like that and have characters that have safe yellow moves, um, change it so you give them a tool, like what I was talking about before, having a tracking tool that can beat sidesteps. Just give them one of their other moves, give it really good tracking. Like maybe for All Might, his Tilt Quirk 1, where he like dashes up and does the like, I don't know what it's called, but the X swipe, Tilt Quirk 1, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> but when he does that, make that his like anti armor move. It's, it'll still be unsafe, so if you make the wrong read, you get punished. Um, but if you make the right read, you beat their sidestep. And, yeah, I feel like this will just be a great addition to the game's meta, because there's basically... the risk-reward, like, idea in this game is just so wonky. It's... I, it's one of the things that actually I really, really don't like about the game. Like, there's no risk to doing most things, and the reward for things is also bad. Like, like, talking about reward of, like, deciding to be the aggressor and going into press buttons. A lot of the time you don't get anything that for that because the opponent will just do a random sidestep and attack you for that, and you get nothing. Because you get you get negative because you're getting hit now. So yeah, I feel like those changes will be a really good addition. So I'll just recap those quickly. Red attacks do not track. They go in a straight line. They don't track. Um, yellow, uh... Sidesteps cost half of your stamina gauge, or even three quarters. They have a little bit more recovery at the end, so you can't attack as quickly after them. So they're not like just adding instant invincibility to the beginning of your buttons, which currently is what they're doing. Um, and for yellow attacks, they completely 
have like unlimited tracking. They track sidesteps to any capacity. So like no matter when they do the sidestep, it'll still track and hit them. Um, and but you also cannot uh, cancel your yellow attack. So they are truly an unsafe move. So there's something that you can actually punish in this game, and it's something that is a real unsafe move. Because currently those don't exist in this game. Okay. And the next system that I am not a fan of. Actually, I'm gonna quickly change characters. I'm gonna go and uh who will I go with? Shit. I have another controller so I can control both characters. I'll get Endeavor. And I'm pretty sure Ida has a hard knockdown from his regular attack string, so I'll use him. Okay, so what I'm talking about now is the wake up and recovery system. Um, I don't actually have too many complaints about it. I think it's pretty good. It's kind of unique. I'm not, not crazy, to be honest. But I think it works. For a game like this, it is effective. But I feel like there are things that should be changed about it to make it feel not just... I don't know, it feels pretty janky to me and like unfair to both people at the same time, which is really weird. It's, it's awkward a lot of the times. So in this game, there are two kinds of knockdowns. So with Ida here, if I make him do two attacks, I'm controlling Endeavor right now. So I'm, I'm controlling both characters, or trying to, just so you know. And I can't recover here with Endeavor. So this is a hard knockdown. I just have to splat onto the floor and get up. I can't get up sideways, I can't recover or anything. So a lot of moves, like see if I do this with Ida, even if I'm on the ground, I can recover. And see it does that blue flash, and he gets up into the air. And I'm slightly invincible for those, like for the recovery frames, but I'm in the air and I get up quickly. And but the second type of knockdown is this knockdown, which is a hard knockdown, which just makes your opponent fall to the ground. They just have to lie there and get up. Um, which like is taking away their option to recover. Um, you can have the option to not recover even after moves that you can recover from. And as you see there, Endeavor just fell down, lied on the ground, and got up with his, his invincibility frames. And if you don't know what the invincibility frames on wake up are, um, if you can see when Endeavor's waking up, he flashes white for almost a whole second there as he gets up. And those are frames where you are completely invincible. So there's quite a bit of time as Endeavor where I can get up and press buttons before the opponent can even hit me. Which is something that is in a lot of games because if you weren't invincible as you're getting up, you just have to block every time or you get hit by a red attack and the, the pressure would be too ridiculous. You wouldn't be saved even after a combo. They would just be straight back onto you. So it gives you a little bit of leeway after you get knocked down. You have some invincibility frames. You can go in and press your buttons and it's kind of your turn now. And I think that's a kind of fair thing. But I do think it is too annoying. Like, really annoying. So I'm going to keep controlling Eda now. And I'm sure something you guys have experienced is like really annoying this game. It's really hard to get open. So like when you knock the opponent down, and you want to keep applying pressure, like you're a rushdown character, you want to keep being close to them, and you want to, like, not give them the options to press buttons and wake up. Because a lot of people, like, if when they wake up, they just wake up, like, mashing X, like, pressing buttons, like, trying to catch you off guard by doing anything like that. So you want to try and counter that, right? So you're, like, waiting near where they wake up, you're ready to press buttons, but it is so hard to time Okis in this game. Oki just means, like, attacks on wake up. It's so hard in this game compared to any other game, like whether it's a, uh, an arena fighter or a 2D game. They're just so difficult in this because of how weird the um, invincibility frames on Wake Up are. They last for so long and like they even go like past like when they're like standing for like quite a significant amount of time. So it's really hard to time your OP. And a lot of the time if you do try to do your OP and like put pressure on Wake Up, if I'm press yeah, I was trying to press buttons, but if I slightly miss time, the opponent completely punishes me because they're invincible, can press buttons, I'm pressing buttons, uh, but if you press buttons, you're not hitting them because they're invincible. <laughs> so, something that I would change about that, I'll leave it, I'll, I will, I'll leave the wake up so they have the invincibility frames, but one thing I would change is something you can do to counter the invincibility frames. So if they just want to mash buttons, and use those, that whiteness to keep them completely invincible and just mash buttons. If I do a yellow attack here, I mean a red attack, 
see how it's hitting when he's white, and it should, like, he's, he's off the ground, so, like, see if buttons like this that I was pressing hit whiffed at the beginning, it made my first button hit. But if it was a red attack, it would hit. So what I would change about the wake-up system of non-recoveries is that red attacks go through the invincibility armor on wake-up. So if the opponent just wants to mash buttons or stand there and block, I can hit them with my red attack, even though no other button of mine would have hit. And then with most characters, I might get a combo. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I haven't played with either for a while. Um, but yeah, and you might think, oh, that's what people already do, and it's already annoying how people are always pressing like red attacks on wake up because they're they can be really hard to uh, avoid. Like, say with Mirio, who has <laughs> an infinite tracking red attack for some reason. And that also goes back to my my first change, which with red attacks, that they are not as ridiculous. So not they won't track as ridiculously, which means that the opponent, if they are waking up like this and using the, their invincibility frames, and I go to, to use my red attack to go through their invincibility frames, pretend that hit, and I hit them. But if they think that I'm gonna do that, they can just do a sidestep. Sidestep on wake. Oops. They can just do a sidestep on wake up. Oh my god. <laughs> so he waits on the ground. I go to do a red attack. Oh, not a recovery. But you know what I mean. So if they have their invincibility frames, just do a sidestep. The red attack misses, and you get to punish their red attack. So, it, but it gives a bit more mix up and possibility for pressure on wake up. And this also will, like, all of these changes that I've made will all of kind of combine in, like, a situation like this. So if I knock my opponent down, if they sidestep, and I do a yellow attack, you know how I said that I would make yellow attacks have complete tracking, so even if they do a sidestep, it hits. So I knock my opponent down, I think they're gonna do a sidestep, I do my yellow attack, it hits them. It hits their sidestep, and I get a combo for that. If I knock them down, and they just want to, I don't know, mash buttons like an idiot and use their invincibility frames, I do my red attack, I get a combo. So it's all about making reads on wake up, and if you make the wrong one, you get punished for it. Because you're, you're deciding to be the aggressor and make a read. Obviously there's the option to just like run away and zone, obviously not with Ida, but with a lot of characters, once they knock you down, they're just gonna walk away, or like block, or just be the passive. But I feel like if you're playing the aggressive game, you, sh you should have options, but like, because currently on Wake Up, you just have nothing except for like, wait, <laughs> just stand there awkwardly until they finish. And <laughs> until they get up. And yeah, and that's only the only time when you can hit them. So yeah, and those things would all change. And if they do decide to sidestep, they've lost a lot of their um, sidestep gauge. So if you like, do some good pressure on them then, then there's a good chance that you're maybe gonna break their guard. But I think just all of these changes that I've made would all like culminate to a lot like more in-depth game, like where you actually have to think about what moves you're doing. And like you can actually have advantage and you can make good reads on your opponent. Because at the moment, making a read is like something that barely exists in this game. Like the only thing that you could like read is like if they're gonna do a sidestep, you would do it your attack like slightly later. <laughs> um yeah, and um, talking about recoveries and wake-ups, another thing that I would uh, fix um, in regards to recovery. So if I do something like this, my opponent's in the air. Oops. I'll put... Uh, wait, okay, so <laughs> I'm controlling Endeavor now, and I'm pretty sure Ida is... No, he's a two-player. I'll set him to recovery. So as you know, there are recoveries off of basically any knockdown that isn't a hard knockdown. Even if it like splats you onto the ground, um, I don't know if Endeavor has anything like it. But there are a lot of moves, maybe with um, kind of like shoot style Deku's Quirk One, where he like grabs you and then like splats you on the ground, or Uraraka has that with a yellow attack. But um, when you're like lo like splatted on the ground or in the air, you have the option to recover. If it's not a hard dock down, you can recover. And I feel like the recovery system is kind of, <laughs> like a lot of things in this game, it's kind of too strong, but also like too weak, like it's kind of pointless. Like there's just nothing, like you don't really get much for it, but it's also really strong in a way. So what I mean is that, so recoveries, 
you have basically an invincible wake up, like stand up from when you're getting launched in the air. Instead of flying, you can wake up and change your trajectory with a few recovery frames, and you can choose whatever direction you um you want to recover in. So, Ida in here, he has like, it's not 360 degree motion, but like, however many angles there are in this game where you can go like left, right, forward, back, and like all the things in between, you can recover in all of those angles, which makes it extremely hard to guess where the opponent's gonna end up, unless you're like in the corner. Oh, it doesn't even work there. <laughs> it's extremely hard to like try and make some like kind of prediction of where they're going to end up because they can go backwards, they can go forwards, they can go behind you. So a lot of the time if you're trying to do some like cool stuff, like there are characters that this like applies a lot more for like a version 2 um, overhaul or characters that like to do resets or like can catch you on recovery. It's really hard because if you recover backwards then they can't reach you but if they try to do a dash to get towards you and then you recover towards them then you go behind them and it's just extremely hard to do resets um, on characters because recoveries are so strong. So what I would change is that there are only two types of recovery. So if I go back to having Ida as second player, and he does something like this, there's only your up recovery, and I would add a new recovery but I can't show, obviously, because it doesn't exist. But a recovery, but it recovers down. A down recovery, I feel like, would be a huge improvement to this game. Because instead of having, like, all the angles possible in this game, there's two options for recovering. You either... Actually, there's three now. So you either um, take a hard knockdown, and you lie down, and you get your invincibility frames, but you don't recover. Or you can recover up. Or you can recover down. So where, like, instead of jumping up, he just, like, I don't know, jumps down and then falls to the ground. And so that basically adds only two elements you have to worry about if the opponent is gonna wake up. So if I'm Ida, and I'm, I don't know, doing something like this, and I want to kind of reset my opponent, if he wants to recover and I, like, jump into the air, it's really hard to show, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to control two controllers at once. But say if I do something like this, and then Endeavor recovers up, I jump into the air, I like press another jump after my yellow tag, as you can see here, I could jump and then press another button, and that would probably beat his jump, his um, air recovery, because he decided to recover up, so unless he does a, um, uh, unless he does like a yellow move, or a sidestep, or something that can um, beat that, I'm probably going to beat whatever buttons he does, because I have more plus frames, so if he tries to recover up and press buttons, I'm going to beat him, because I jump into the air, and I press buttons where he was going to be. Because he goes, oh, that was cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, and if I think that he's going to be, if I predict that he's going to try and be tricky and recover down, I could do something that like would hit lower, and maybe I don't do the jump, and I just press another button, he recovers down, and I just... Which I guess would be at like nearly the same rate as just falling. And then you can get like another loop off of your um, whatever button you do, because you make the read that they do something. And that's something that I like about fighting games, is when you're able to make a read <laughs> off of something. So yeah, I think he's gonna do that. Do it again. Do it again. So if he recovers down, obviously they're not, it's not gonna make like infinite loops. So like if you guess wrong, you get in a full combo, guess wrong again, another full combo. Um, I can make it so that it, it, like, it's zero on advantage to both people. So it's not like if you recover downwards and the opponent predicts it, they can always punish it. If you recover downwards and do like a sidestep or a yellow attack, that'll beat whatever they're doing. But if you decide to recover and then press buttons, which is something that a lot of people do, I'm like, just letting you know. Um, then you get punished for that, and I think that's fair. But if you do decide to recover and do a yellow attack, and then the, the opponent tries to go for some kind of um, combo or reset, you can punish them for that. And if they predict that you're gonna do a yellow attack or something, they can just guard it in the air, and then that's gonna be extremely punishable in the air if you just do a just card and completely beat whatever they're doing. But, yeah. If they do a yellow attack in the air, and if they do a yellow attack in the air and you block it, 
you're definitely getting punished. But I feel like that would just make it a lot more, I don't know, enjoyable. Let's, you have to predict what the opponent's gonna do. You can decide to go for some cool, like, Oki and mix-ups and stuff off of, like, your attacks. And then rushdown characters are actually gonna be fun in this game. Because a lot of the time, I don't know, I don't really find the rushdown in this game fun. Because, I don't know, either the opponent recovers and then you just have to wait to see where they go and then do something afterwards. Or they just, if you get a hard knockdown like this and they just have to get up, you, do, you don't really get anything for it, because they just have tons of invincibility frames, and I just have to stand here <laughs> and then press my buttons. Like, I'm not a huge fan of how the game is in regards to these at the moment. And, um... Oh yes, and in regards to resets and staggers, as I was mentioning before, um, I really don't like the scaling system of the game. So if I, like, throw out a few projectiles, and they get hit by a projectile, and then I go and do my combo. It does no damage? Like, what? I don't under- I don't understand- like, I get the reason that they did this. So they were trying to get rid of people that, um, get rid of the fact that you can get, like, 100% damage combos. Because if I do something like this, and then go in for a red attack there, then my combo is going to do a huge amount of damage. So they're trying to stop doing that. But- Oh, I feel like they just ruined what could have been a good part of the game. Because if I do a stagger like this, and then like this, and then like this, my combo now is doing no damage. Like, I'm getting no damage for doing my combo, because I did a few staggers. And that, like, defeats the purpose of, like, mix-ups and stuff. So if I do a few buttons, then the opponent doesn't decide to block, and then I get more. Like, why did I do that if I'm gonna get no reward? I may as well just try and go for my buttons, and just pray that they hit and then get a combo after that, rather than, like, trying to do some, like, fancy mix-ups, or, like, maybe if I do this, and I dash cancel and go into a red attack, there's no point in me doing this, because I'm not getting anything for it. It's... I, I, yeah, I don't understand. I feel like a way that they could fix this, maybe, is by either having, like, somewhat reduction... So, how it works in this game is they basically treat it like it is a combo. So, even though it is in a combo and the opponent could block here or press a button or sidestep or do anything. If I press a button, like kind of soon-ish, after one of my attack hits, it treats it like it's the same combo and has the scaling of the previous buttons. So that there did no damage because it was treating it as if like these two fireballs were part of the combo and like <laughs> it th it's thinking that they're like together and I was comboing them all together even though I wasn't. So like, even a simple like thing like this, it should do like 5,600, did like 1,000 or 2,000. And, yeah, I just really don't think that's cool. I, I think they sh I do like how they're trying to make it fair that there isn't like 100% combo resets or stuff. But maybe just have like, scaled down scaling. So like, have it do like, kind of less damage, but not as much scaling as a regular- Don't treat it like it's the same combo. Make, do it, make it do a little bit less damage, but don't have it be like, they're the same combo. That really doesn't make sense. Especially characters that like to do, uh, well, it doesn't really work with the Endeavor. The characters that like to do resets in the air, actually it kind of works in my controlling either, yeah. So characters that like to kind of do resets, actually no, it doesn't really work with either. The characters that leave you, um, standing, like a character like, um, Toga or Mirio after Mirio's quirk 2-2, two, two. if you just do it twice, the opponent's left standing, and you can press a button again. And if you press a button there, then you can, like, it doesn't keep counting, because it's they, it's not like they connect into each other. But... It treats it like it's the same combo. So even, if, even though you decided to go for, like, a little cheeky mix-up at the end and reset your opponent, for something that's completely not real, by the way. Like, whenever you do something like this, like, the opponent can just press buttons, or sidestep, or yellow attack, and go straight through whatever you're trying to do. But like, if you want to make a read and do, like, some sneaky stuff, I feel like you should be rewarded for doing something like this. So, like, even if I just catch the opponent and I'm doing something like this, this would probably be the end of the combo. You know, I'm trying to add some more damage at the end. But look, I'm getting nothing for this at this point. 2,000 damage? Oh, wow. I'm so glad I reset that combo and, go <laughs> and got 2,000 damage at the end of it. Like, that's gonna be barely more damage than if I just had done it 
normally. And I know it doesn't count it properly ugh, um, in training mode. But I just don't like how you're not rewarded at all for trying to like reset or be cheeky and do stuff like to mix up your opponent. Like, you get nothing for it. I don't and I don't understand that reasoning behind like making it completely completely scaling just like it's a combo. So yeah. I just I I know I talked about that for quite a while, but I feel I'm passionate about this because I like doing my resets and like mixing up my opponent, and if I do the right thing, I should be rewarded for it, and that's how most games work. But in this game, it's like, oh, you know, you kind of did something kind of cool. You can have, like, a teeny, teensy bit more damage <laughs> for doing that reset. But there's basically no point in me doing it, because the risk and reward is not in my favor. Maybe I'll add, like, 1,000 damage to my combo, or maybe 2,000. <laughs> like, at max, you're adding 2,000 damage to your combo. So instead of 9,000, I'm doing 11,000. So, you know, a little bit more damage. But whenever I do something like these, this, these are completely not real. Ida can press buttons here before I can. And so I'm making the read that he's not going to know that I'm doing this. And I'm going to get this because he was unprepared for it. So I was taking a risk to do that, but not getting rewarded for taking the risk. So, yeah. That, I would change that as well. But, basically, that's all the changes that I would make to the, uh, the game, guys. Let me know... <laughs> how you feel about my changes and also suggest anything that you would change in the game um, Yeah, leave those suggestions down in the comments below. <laughs> Let me know how you feel about what I was talking about Do you agree? Do you disagree? Am I too harsh on the game's mechanics? Am I boring? Do I <laughs> want everything to be fair and equal? Maybe But yeah, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one